This conference will now be recorded. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Eileen Dangler, Executive Director at NABA. I am very excited that you could join us on this webinar. I think this is our sixth publicity speed dating webinar, and I want to give special thanks to Mary Beth Pelly, who has led this each and every year and uh, has provided us with tools and inspiration so that you can all put your best foot forward when you meet publishers at our publicity speed dating or just in general, even if you're not attending speed dating, which I'm pleased to announce is sold out. We have 35 bookstores coming to meet publishers that day. So welcome, and I'm turning it over to Mary Beth now. All right. Thank you, everyone. Coming in early, I appreciate it. You know, you have a lot going on, so we're going to get started. So let's make sure I can switch my screens. Okay, just for those who don't know me, my name is Maribeth Pelly. I'm an event planner for Booktown. I work there as a, um, I've been there as actually a consultant per se, or a 1099 uh, for, since 2014. Um, so we've worked out this great arrangement where I can be a bookseller, uh, um, an, an event planner for her and helped Rita, that's Rita's the owner of Booktown, and help her develop a system from really the ground up because Rita was a new owner to the bookstore and I was not part of the um, publishing bookstore industry. So um, together we figured out a great system and what we learned, we shared with, with the other members. So that's how this got started. Um, Booktown, just for you uh, who don't know, is uh, in a, a community called Maniswan. It's a short community. We have a thousand square feet in our in our bookstore. That includes everything: the storage, the bathroom, the office. And uh, we have put on. Actually, I did a final count last night. We did 68 events for 2018. So each year we we grow in numbers of events. We do children and adult events all year round. So. We have some challenges to, uh, when we do our uh, events. You know, it's space. Uh, it's important for us to find vendors and getting across to uh, the publishers that we're a year-round short community, okay? So these are things that I always have to press upon them. Um, so in this uh, webinar, of course, we're gonna go over and make sure that you understand how to prepare a press kit for your store. Even if you're a new store, um, there are gonna be different versions that I'm gonna show you uh, in press kits because um, you know each store is preparing a press kit based on where they are in their events in their event um, you know maturity per se, without a better you know without a, knowing a better word there and um, you know how you evolve so if you're a new store don't get overwhelmed like oh I should have all this content or I should have this grid that's this big showing all these events um, and you know don't compare yourself to the numbers you really grow your event system. Um, just as if you were like raising a child per se, it's it's done over time, year to year. You build on what you've done and the systems that you've developed. Um, I wanted to just uh, remind everyone that you have some great resources at your fingertips through um, NABA, and that one being the web page. Uh, the website has a page for bookstores to look at other publicity kits. So this is just a reminder where you can go and look at different um, styles, formats, uh, different information that's presented that may apply to your store. So when you're looking at these different press kits, make sure that you're modeling what you like. Please don't copy, that wouldn't be cool. Um, but use what, you appropriate what, what you see and use it for your store because in essence, we wanna make sure that you know, you are as a as a bookstore standing out on your own. Um, we also have uh, I put together a press kit checklist for um, anyone that's putting you know putting something together. Either they want to hand this off to um, a staff member, or they want to do it themselves and just make sure that they have um, all the items on on the page that apply. Okay, so I can provide this checklist for anyone who doesn't have it, and also I can um, make it available on the neighbor website if that's easier for everyone. I so, just want to jump in and also tell everyone that the page where we house publicity press kits, we promote to the publishers throughout the year. So it is important for you to email us after you get your press kit ready. And uh, so it's there for publishers to access as well. 
Correct, correct. So as you update your press kits, make sure that you send them over to Eileen and Kit so they can update this page. Okay, so this is one-stop shopping. This is really an excellent um, page for the publishers to be able to go and not have to you know, try to find the printed copy that they got from you or an email um, attachment. So this is also very, very helpful. Also, these, uh, these webinars are recorded, so you can re-listen to it, you can review it and replay it uh, you know, with your staff members or yourself and just review the content that was um, you know, explained. And these are all the years past, uh, you know, but just listen to the most recent one and you can have that um, for you know, unlimited replay. So another thing that's so important is that you know you attend speed dating, and as we just heard, that it's sold out. So it's great that everyone has taken the chance to show up. I really do think that is um, a major part of the success of developing your event program. Um, the effort of putting together this document and also taking the time to spend the day uh, meeting the publishers. That time away out of the office really has been uh, productive. I, I've gotten a great return on investment for all that time and effort every time I've gone every year. So I'm glad if something happens where you can't get there, see if you can send another staff member. If that's not possible, um, do whatever you can to get there. It is a great event. So why, why a press kit for your story? Like why do you have to go through all this? Your new store, you got so many things that you have to work on and take care of as a new, biz, uh, as a new store owner. So it's like, why do I have to take the time to do this? I can just say it. Um, but um, there are some reasons. One, it's a critical promotional tool for you, for the publishers, for the publicity contacts who don't know you. Um, it's a it's a one page doc, or you know, it's a one one stop shopping as far as where the, to get all the information about the attributes of your store. It's also good to share with authors who you're trying to uh, get to know, and me media media outlets, uh, bloggers, and so forth. Another reason to prepare this document is also if you have a staff that you're building and you want them to understand you know what is unique about your store you can give them this this document they can either prepare it for you um, by listening through all the different trainings or they you know they can review it and make sure that they understand all the different dynamics and levels that make up your store it's a marketing tool for when you're starting conversations with your partners so bring it to your conversations um, when you're meeting and doing business development, you know, to these new partners, and you know, maybe you you create a different one that doesn't have sales in it, um, but it, at least it's a conversation that you can leverage, saying, okay, this is what I have in my mailing list, this is what I have in my social media, and this is how we're working it. So it does give you an opportunity to have some leverage when you're starting these conversations with these type of partners. When you're preparing the document, I always emphasize to the preparer that they know who's going to be reading it. And that is going to be publicity contacts, publishers, um, who deal with hundreds of bookstores like you. So you wanna make sure that you're not putting too much information. Uh, you're just putting the right amount of information that will um, help them recall your conversation when you're, when you're you know, uh, from say the speed dating day and help them visualize the type of venue, the type of um, collaboration that you're trying to put together with your with their authors. Um, so you're just trying to help them. You're really trying to give them the best information about your store in the best possible format and layout. Um, so know your audience, know that they're very busy and they're working with a lot of stores. So uh, we wanna pick your information that you share on this document strategically. Okay, so we're gonna, leading into that, we're gonna talk about what to include and what not to include. And there's some evolutions to this press kit over the years, the six years that we've been presenting this workshop. Um, I always like to find out what's trending and what is important now for the publishers. What was important six years ago is not necessarily important um, today for today's conversation about event planning. Event planning, as you know, for the, for the seasoned booksellers has really evolved just in the last five years. So. You know, in, in some part we've become, booksellers have become event planners, right? Full-fledged event planners. So there's a lot of details that the publishers now wanna hear. And so we've, we're trying to evolve and keep the press kit to be relevant. So I'll go over some of the changes that have happened through the years. Okay, so the most important thing that you wanna put on your, on your press kit is 
who you are. You want to make it apparent. And I really can see that people have gotten that, you know, you know, to establish who they are, what they're doing, um, where they are, and how they go about doing it. And I think um, over the years, I've seen the format has really been uh, processed. You know, the the concepts of of the format of of the press kit have definitely been. Um, picked up over the years. So you really are looking at your examples. You're look, listening to the training um, And so for that, I'm really happy that that's made an impact um, There are some comments like, you know You just want to make sure when you're talking to your publicity contact that you know They may not know geographically where you are exactly um, So you want to make sure that you're giving them enough information about where you are and how you are in relation to like larger cities and and access to where you know the hubs are, where the authors are living. Again, I've said this before, keeping it brief is, is key, but just enough information to make sure that you're memorable and that they can recall the conversation and why they want to do business with your store with, for their author. Formatting is key. So a lot of long form writers, people who like to write in long form, um, may, may um, have to remember to go back and bullet and to bold text so things can be easily scanned because as you know it is just it's just the way of the way the readers are reading um you know for a situation like this they're scanning the information okay so you want to make sure your document when you're in the speed dating conversation you can point easily to different information as you're having your conversation so look at it with fresh eyes from that concept um, once you get all your information in, you want to make sure that you can format it in a way that's easily to read and find, okay? When you go to speed dating, you will be required to bring printed copies. It's, su it's suggested, of course, um, but it, I mean, at this point, I think it's re required. Um, you want to be able to leave, if you meet with uh, one or two publicity contact people, you want to leave them each with a copy of your press kit. So be prepared for that meeting. And um, I've learned some things along the way as well about coloring and formatting and text size. So, um, so I will go over that with you when I show you some examples. Now the press kit, you know, again, going back to the question, why, why should I do this? Because this is the document that I feel does the best thing at, at featuring your best selling points, okay? So what do I mean by selling points? You know, we're all booksellers, we're all selling books, um, but what makes you different from the others? What makes you unique? So there's things about your community, there are things about your um, store layout, your location, uh, the different media outlets that you have access to. These are things that make you unique. Maybe your partnerships, maybe you have um, some good marketing channels through your available to you through your through your partners. Okay, these are things that are going to make that are they're going to want to listen to the publishers. So remember, know your market and know what they want to they want to hear, and um, look at your store and your community and your relationships and see what is the um, what you can feature. That's the best selling points. Okay, so you know this is also a document that highlights your events, your most successful events. So if you're just starting out and you've only had some local community events and they have been successful, put them on, this, on the press kit. It's important for them to see where you are in your development of event planning and event marketing. So start where you, start where you are. And each year when you do these conversations with the publishers, you will see the evolution of your event marketing and your event planning systems grow. So start where you are, list your events, list your story times, list your big events, your large events, and so forth. And again, going back to um, knowing your market, you want to make sure that you're you're putting the information down about your events that is meeting what the publishers are looking for. So recently, I've seen a lot of requests for creative events. People want to do in conversation events. So these are things that uh, this, we're going to change a little bit of the format. This is part of the evolution of the press kit um, to add information to meet that, meet those trends, okay? So which, which events were in conversation, which events were Skype and so forth. Um, yeah, and 
to notice the trends, where to look for them. If you're not sure, go to Edelweiss and look at the event grid requests. Some of them have the clues right there as to what type of events they're looking for. And even if you're, if you're doing uh, the traditional straight um, events program and that's all you've done, that's fine because that's where you are. And that, we have a lot of those events still. So um, I'm looking to pepper in some new type of formatted events as we, as we continue to grow our event program. So I hope that makes sense. Another trend is uh, so publishers want to see how we're using social media to, to help promote the events, both pre-event, at the event, and post-event. So that's a lot to take on if you're, you know, you are, don't have a large staff and you don't have someone assigned to social media, but do what you can. You know, at least be on the social media platforms, show that on your press kit, show how many followers you have, and then be sure to talk about how you're promoting it, okay? These are things that they're looking for. These are trends in their questions to me throughout the year. And I know you're also um, seeing that as well. So put it in your document and let's give them the information that they're looking for. Okay, so this is the part of the um, presentation where I go through press kits that, that were submitted by NABA members. But I just wanna stop and just see if there's any questions along the way with the things that I just covered. I talk quickly, I know. Um, but if I use terminology that you're not familiar with, just uh, put it in the chat and uh, we'll get to it. So I'm just going to see. I don't see anything in the chat. So I just want to make sure, Kit, you see anything. No, there's nothing there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on. All right. I know, let's see, Kathy has, she's on a time frame. So I'm going to start off with Newtown. And... I just, let's see here. I'm gonna pop out of this presentation here so I can pull up Newtown's press kit so everyone can see it, okay? All right, so here we are. So Newtown has done their this training um, a few times and so they have really followed the form, the suggested format fairly well, I think. Um, so we're gonna start at the top. So who, what, where is they, here's their name of their store, okay? Their big logo, where they're located and who to contact. Okay, so key important information right at the top uh, for, for any publicity contact that's looking to see, okay, well, who is the person I call at the store and who do I ask for? Who do I email right away? I don't wanna have to hunt and peck for this information. Um, she may know what this means by the numbers, so I'll just leave that to her, but I did question that. I didn't know what that was. Um, another thing that I like in press kits is it's right up front that they are a reporting store. If you're not a reporting store, please please register yourself to be a reporting store for um, these different outlets. We have gotten events over other stores because simply because that other store was not a reporting store. So you don't want to lose out for that. It's something easy that you can set up. And we can talk about that with Eileen after if you're not sure. Um, show your membership, show that you're active. And you know, you're, again, you're showing up to these um, events that can help the publishers get to know you. Kathy's st uh, store represents her social media. I think that's important. And then what we're gonna add to the conversation, okay? So as we, in the past, we've always wanted to list this, but we just don't want this to be a static number. We want it to be able to explain either verbally and, um, or some here in the copy that maybe you're using uh, paid ads, okay? Uh, you know, you're doing live stream, things like that. So social media has really expanded and it's become a prominent channel, marketing channel for our store. So um, let's add a little bit more information to this. I like that she writes that it's a weekly newsletter, so I don't have to ask how often do you send out your newsletter, okay? And she's telling me how much it is, um, how she has in memberships. And that's really great. So for a store that's just starting out, you're building this. This is a very important asset for your store. So, um, cause you have control over this publication as often as you want. So it's great that they have um, get provided those numbers. They're checking on their database and making sure that it's growing over the years. And uh, they tell me how often they're sending out the newsletters. Okay, so the demographics. This was once important in the beginning when we started the um, the this press kit 
training and I feel like it's it's evolved. So in conversations last year, they were saying, okay, it's great to know that your population has 290,000 people in here, but are those people book buyers? So when we put this information, the demographics, I think I'm, I'm almost opting to say, let's leave it off or, or let's just say, you know, we have a population and that we know they're book buyers and maybe you can put some numbers to it. I don't know. Um, but I think it's a, so for right now, I'm saying if you need this space, let's leave it off and have this information ready for the conversation. Because really, when you think about it, what is a publicity person supposed to do with this right now in this conversation if they're trying to book the author? A lot of times this number is is misleading to say that they're book sellers, they're book buyers. So we have to be clear about that. Oops. Um, I like the school enrollments as well. But also, I would like to know, are these the schools that she has, um, that they have relationships with? And are they currently, um, you know, maybe the grades, if it's an elementary school, a uh, high school, I think I would want to know about that, about uh, the schools versus the enrollments of students. Have these numbers ready for the conversation, but let's give them more specific targeted information about the school and how you are currently working with them as partners, okay? All right, another thing that I always press upon, again, when I, when I mentioned about format, I'd like to see some things bulleted in this. And so what did I say here? Um, because all this copy is considered equal when it's all in the same um, font, per se. So what I'd like to say is I would like her to bull, bullet um, that she's part of a shopping center. Um, I really always liked this, that she had these um, discussions, book discussions each month. That is a standard, I mean, that's a standard, that's a, that's a built-in audience for the publishers to know about. So let's, let's accent that, okay? So by bolding that font. And then also, this always, I just thought was so great. They have a monthly cookbook club. Come on, that's great, let's bold it. That needs to be emphasized. So again, going back to that slide, I said unique selling points. These are unique for you. Um, so I'm big on grids. I think it's just easier for the publisher to read information in a grid format because that's the way they're sending us the information for the event planning, right? It's in grid. So uh, they have the author, the publisher, the venue, the title, sales and attendance. Now, over the years, we have talked a lot about these two columns, sales and attendance. Do we put them in? Do we not put them in? And I have been back and forth um, with different formats where I provide it and where I don't provide it. And when I have not provided it, I'm going to tell you the conversation was not as strong. So I've gone back to putting it back into the grid and showing it to the publishers because they um, they want to know, like, why are you not showing me this number? So I eliminate that. I eliminate that question. And um, I put it right there and I explain. And I'm only highlighting my most successful ones. But what I am going to add to this grid on, on Booktown's uh, press kit, and I'm suggesting it for the others, is now that they're looking at different formats of events, like they want to know if it's ticketed, they want to know if it's free, they want to know if it's a bundled ticket, um, uh, is it a Skype event? These, I'm going to add a column in here and um, to put in the format. So that may squish this down or not, but I'm going to just let it go as a suggestion right now. And I'm going to see how it goes when I have my speed dating conversation and see if that information is going to be more helpful than not. Uh, let's see here. So I'm on the back side, and it's two pages. I just wanted to emphasize that. I thought that was great. It's a good length. For those that are just starting out with their um, um, press kits, I just want to know I'm big into footers and headers, headers and footers. So this is a nice, strong header, and then the footer. So if for some reason, if, if someone printed this on two separate pages, they don't have to guess who this is. When they flip over the page, they still know who it is, okay? They can identify the store in an instant. Um, so again, I like this format a lot. It's pretty much a verbatim of my suggestions. They've highlighted their, um, their venue partners, okay? Super clear. I love that it tells me the capacity of each venue. And she tells me parking. Well thought out. So people, um, you know, that's really key for when she's talking about with um, collaborators different other partners in the community. So she can, you know, it's just a, another asset to your location. Moving over to the advertising block. Um, 
I think I liked everything here. It's, you know, I think I wanted to say uh, press releases sent to local print and online media. Oh, okay. My questions were here. Uh, target advertising. Are you at, are you paying for, I guess you are. That's what you mean by target advertising. So I would say targeted paid advertising in that. And then I would just say, um, you know, print local, like how many are you sending out? Is this really happening on a, on a, you know, on a event event basis? If so, I think that's great. Let's bold it. Also, um, this is key. I thought this was really unique. You get together with uh, local bookstores and you do a group advertisement. So that needs to be bolded because that will help them make tours and they, that will help them understand the media that's available to them in this area, specifically because years past, this was a challenged area for getting media attention, but here they've, they've collaborated and put an ad in together. At least that's the way I interpret it. Okay, she has the travel section. So that's helpful for people who are help, trying to plan the tour and figure out how the author is going to get from one point to another, from the airport to the store. Um, so that's helpful. And then uh, school tours. All right. This was, I had some comments on this section. Uh, I thought maybe this section, school tours and school enrollment, this information should be in the same block. And again, the question that's asked from New York is, do you work with a pre-order form? So let's put that in this copy here and let's, let's format this a little bit better so they can see. So you know, here you are breaking out the schools, what you have available as far as what types of schools, what grade levels of school. Let's re, I would say, Kathy, let's reformat this section because school um, events are very helpful to the event programs. And I think you want to put some emphasis on this section. So though, that is my, that is my review of the new town. I think they did an excellent job. And over the years, I really appreciated the format that they've taken up and committed to. All right, I'm gonna stop there and just look at the chat to see if there's any questions. And I think we're good, I'm moving on. All right. So the second one is a dog-eared bookstore. So cute, like it. And just to show you the length, it's one page, okay? So I just, they are recently open store in Palmyra, New York. Okay, great, so they say that right here. So let's bold that so I know exactly who you are, where you are. And, uh, you know, again, they put their logo up there. I can visualize the store. Uh, let's see. They put their social media over here. Okay, well, let's start at the top. Carrie is the contact. So she's the owner and she was the person who I would talk to about events. They have their social media. She talks about her followers. And again, taking what I said before, it's just like, are you, um, okay, so she says that under here, actually. All events are advertised in print. There's NBA. So advertised, so that's paid, I'm assuming, right? Paid, paid advertisement. And um, that's good. Also like that she was, she puts her awards up front. So um, looking at About Us, let's bold some of this font in here. So mostly this one, because this is their historic village and a popular tourist destination. So that's key for foot traffic. And historic may be relatable to some of the authors that they have that are in that genre. Um, also highlight the, the cities that you're close to. I think that was important too. Um, notable events. So as you grow, let's put this in a grid, okay? Um, but this was good. Add to this to publishers. So I would create a small grid actually right now. And I would put in, make it follow, kind of like follow the format that I've suggested in New Towns. Add the publisher. And uh, I think that should be good for you guys for now. Also, this is important, like I said. So I would put this either in this paragraph or up above this, okay? So I'd make it key up here, okay? So moving the reporting up. And uh, da -da -da. Oh, yeah, your store capacity. So I didn't see anything that says um, if you had any, any it, what your capacity was at the store. So if I'm missing that, it's not popping out right away as I'm skimming, okay? Let's add that. And also, if you have any venue partners, why don't you indicate that? 
Oh, and book clubs and book uh, story times. So if you have those, put those in this copy, okay? All right, making sure we didn't have any questions in the chat. Looks like we're all good. All right, third press kit, solid state books. Can I just jump in only because I can't read the document names? It's important that the document is your store name. Yeah, yeah. So okay. what, so yeah, Eileen, great reminder. And this is important. So you can't see this on my screen probably, but um, the name of the document, thank you for bringing this up, Eileen. This is one of my notes. So if you can see, can, Eileen, can you see where my mouse is highlighting the name of the document? Yes, I can. Sorry. Okay. So yeah. that's so well, only because my mouse is there that you can see it. So it says Press Kit 2009 A PDF. So for dog-eared books, make sure you put your name in that Press Kit name of the file. So if it's an attachment, the uh, recipient will know who it is because remember they're receiving a lot of these from all over. So New Towns, let's see. Again, you want your name to be super clear in the name of the document. That's what Eileen's saying. Okay. Solid state books abbreviated. They put an acronym. So again, I would just I would just for when you attach it and save that file, make sure it has a full name. All right. Really happy about this press kit. Um, so impressed. Loved it. Looks. I just like the I just like the uh, layout of it too. I thought the um, the information they gave overall was really good and strong. I think they thought about it. Um, it's important to have someone who can um, write in a way in short form um, really strongly. And I think they must have that person on site. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some points as to why I like this. Um, this almost sounded like a mission statement. So it was so strong. And um, I just thought that, you know, it gave me their location and it gave me how it's part, you know, I, I could feel their enthusiasm about the, the, the community around them. Um, so that could start a great conversation with the publicity person uh, when you're in face-to-face -face conversation with them. All right, so it gives me a good idea of where they're located. Um, one thing I wanted to press upon this was I think you should have the year up here because <clears throat> as I was, so sometimes I see, you know, press kits over the years and uh, I want to make sure that I have the current one. So. Uh, for solid state, I would put the year up here. So 2019 press kit. And here's a nice format. So don't, so for the people who are new or don't have the uh, access to some uh, software that will help them with formatting, say publisher or anything uh, like a template and, and a Mac product, don't worry about it. This formatting is very helpful and great, but you can, you don't, it is, it's not necessary for your press kit. You just, Put the information in the best format you can. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by seeing this beautifully designed document. Um, but yeah, it does help when you can have a good layout, a good format. So right away, he's telling they're telling me <clears throat> the square footage of the store. So I get a pretty good idea of the size of it. We also included some pictures so they can see it. Um, and they've gone through some attributes about it. I also thought this was interesting for um retail to be open late now again going by their location that makes sense for their market okay so i you know again a conversation starter about late night events thinking about how the publisher is going to view this also they have this okay so it's again it's tied to this experience so that adds a different element to their events um, so this information overall was well selected. Um, I did have a conversation. I did have a question when I saw this about this and how it relates to events. Is that something that they can use for in conversation Skype events? Not sure. So again, if you're going to put something on your press kit, um, why is it there and how does it relate to events? Okay. All right. So this is helpful. They have a lot of schools in their area, potential partners. All right. A uh, vibrant neighborhood. They gave me their press. Boom, here's the contact information. Okay, nice and bold. And their information. So I'm happy with the footer. This is the second page. So again, to show you, they put a lot of content into two pages. And I think the reason why they're able to do that is because of good formatting. 
Okay, let's stay in touch. Another second page, have the contact information there. So looking at their featured events here, they put the date here, which is good. Uh, and then this is the title and the author put together. So they save some space in, uh, you know, in having a really wide grid. They put the publisher, the venue. And I also like here that they put that it's a type of event. So ding, ding, ding. They're, they're definitely dialed into what's going on with the conversations with the publishers. And they have their attendance and the sales. Okay. And they've had some great events. They definitely have a lot of good things to talk about with their events. And what they've learned. I'm sure they've learned a lot with this event, right? So um, that's good experience and, uh, you know, good conversation to have with the publisher to talk about other events at that scale that um, they are ready for. Uh, and, and just to tag on that, because the publisher wants to hear that you're able to take on a large event based on the staff support and the systems and the operations that you have in play. So again, you, we would all love to have an event at this, with this, you know, this type of event, but you know, are you ready for it? So you only take on the events that you can do successfully with your staff and your systems that you have in place and where you are in the, in the, in the, in the growth of your store. So again, here I am with maps. Um, I think if they needed real estate for something else, they could take this out. Cause I don't know if it's going to, <clears throat> it may relate to them because it's based on the union station. I like that. But other than that, this may be um, an opportunity to give them more, uh, you know, more space for something else. Like if for their case, maybe the venue partner grid, a uh, small grid here, just to say who their current vendors are, ven uh, venue partners are, and the capacity for each of them. Because I've noticed in my conversations when we're talking about different events, we'll we kind of immediately jump to, okay, well, where would we work with that? What venue would we work with? And I and I always can refer to, oh, I have this theater, and here's the capacity. So just something to think about. And again, you know, with your social media, make sure you're talking about what you're doing with your social media. And um, I liked also for those folks here that are selling books online through their uh, website, I like that they have this e-commerce here. So I would bold that. Um, you know, we it is very helpful to have that ability to sell books online. Um, but pretty much very help, very, very, very well done. Very well done, press kit. Okay. I'm going to stop there. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Rebecca. Ah, okay, cool. So Rebecca's in the chat saying uh, Canva has some amazing drag and drop templates. I totally agree. It's a great product and it's free. There's lots of free levels on there. So that's canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. I hope that went to everyone in the chat. I think it did. All right, moving on to the next one. The next press kit is Books with a Past. I reviewed their press kit before. I'm really happy with the way it's looking. Um, again, I'm going to show you the overall length. It's two pages. Okay? It's formatted. And again, it tells me who to contact right away. They got some images that show me how their personality and events go. <laughs> They're great. Okay. Such as helps. You don't have to do images. I used to be very strong on images to give people visuals. I think it does help. But if you don't have the space for your pictures, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because it's important that you, you know, these days you could bring an iPad to a conversation and show them event pictures, organize them, and show them as they relate to your conversation. So that's just another option of how to uh, have the conversation with your publicity contacts, but you know, this, this is done well. So again, um, going over the review here. So again, we have the map and they're showing that they have two stores and they're showing it how, um, you know, again, the distance from uh, the hubs. So I like that, I, but I'm just not sure if it's as valuable as, is, as it was, you know, six years ago when we were strongly suggesting it. So I would say take this out, and um, and I have some notes here about. Okay, so uh, 
uh, I wanted to know what you were doing. So, okay, so you have your social media and I thought maybe you could break out what you're doing with your social media in this, using this space, okay? This, this co contact, this um, content about where you, the demographics and why, again, you know, how does that translate to book buying and that information? So I'm not sure if we need it all laid out the same way. I think we can keep track of that information when we're speaking to them. We can add it in either an email format if it's needed to be said or, or you're, you know, when you're in conversation. But let's, I think we should take it out and put in what we're doing with social media. So as far as doing live streams, doing uh, targeted ads, um, you know, doing Twitter conversations, you know, things, whatever you're doing on social media that's going to help sell, you are doing to help hustle your events. Let's put that in there and use that space. And again, I think we can, um, I think we can take out this map. If you really think it's important to, as far as, you know, booking tours and, and cross marketing, then keep it in. Okay. But for right now, I think for those, it's just, it's just not as helpful anymore. I like the, the title here, our vibe. I think that's, it comes across that they have an exciting, um, passionate uh, store and staff. So I just like their language. Um, again, it's just, it, you have to design these to fit you and to fit your store. You don't wanna copy someone else's. You wanna just model what works for your store. Model what you like for your store. Um, all right, I was looking at your bullets and I like the format. And then I was just wondering, do you not report to the New York Times? So maybe you just want to move this up that you report and because I think it's important they want to know that and then uh, answer the question about New York Times uh, let's see I think oh yeah I like moving the our our vibe section up so maybe right under uh, social media or before it actually I think it should go before and then then social media and then your locations so i would change that up because i'm prioritizing information uh da, da, da. okay so then we on the back we have the about us and uh, my thought here was um i i wanted to understand because in the conversation uh you know i kind of go prepared to these conversations about what my event goals are for the new year and I thought maybe for here, this could be, they could, they could add that to this paragraph, okay? What they're specifically looking for, because they're, they have a lot of genres and they have a big, uh, you know, used book uh, inventory. So it's like, okay, well, what are you focusing on? What are you focusing on for your events this year? And I think that's how we have to narrow this press kit down and focus it. So I think I would like to see a goal in this section, all right? And uh, let's see here. I think grids would be much easier than the bulleted for the event highlights, all right? So I suggest doing a grid, it's easier. You have a lot of content here. So change up the format and make it easier to read. <clears throat> and uh, da -da, let's see here, marketing outreach. Uh, you could put this together too. You could put this together with your social media um, icons that you have on the front page, bring that, Bring that information together. And community partners. Um, okay. I always like, um, so I'm adding something to this. Community partners. You have the, again, I would I probably do, I would probably do a grid or I would format it a little differently. So they could see the name, they could see the capacity. And also I would point out, again, trying to focus this press kit what conversations are currently going on with these venues about say a series of author events? Like, is there sort of any um, proactive conversations going on with these specific partners about events that you want to plan? So say uh, the Enterprise Women's Network, they wanna do a business network, um, a business networking event, and they wanna have authors that do, you know, topics in the genre of business development or self-development I'm just guessing but you know maybe put a little paragraph underneath or a little line underneath it saying like currently looking to book authors in this genre for this venue so it's really proactive okay so I guess I felt like I needed a little more focus on this books with past press kit 
All right, I'm going to stop on that one. Just check the chat. What do we got? Okay, looks like we're good. All right, Riverstone Books. Haven't seen them before, so I was really pleased that they got a press kit together. And so good job. And as you can see, it doesn't have a lot of the graphic design, which is fine, absolutely super fine for press for uh, speed dating. Um, they did include some press releases, which is a lot of copy and a lot of attachments. So um, when you attach something like this for the publishers, make sure you're attaching only what's relevant, okay? I didn't go through all the copy because I got this kind of after the deadline that I needed it, which was fine, but I just didn't have time to go through all, everything that was attached. So um, just to keep that in mind, Riverstone. All right, so they have um, who they are. And so what I'm looking for here is where you are, okay? So you're in the Pittsburgh area. So just based on the format feedback that you've been getting from the other press kits, again, I'm looking for who I'm gonna, where you are and who you are. So who's my contact? You have a lot of space up here. Just put your contact information for the event person right here and where you are. So maybe the address and the contact information for the event planner. Um, Again, I think it's great that you're the newest. So, you know, that's good that you're highlighting that up on top. Um, wasn't sure about this line. If you're gonna need real estate in this document, I'm not sure if they need to have the, um, the, non, the non book item statement in there. So if you're looking for space, I'd leave it out. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see here. I'm going through my notes. I wanted to know, and so if we're taking out this line, I wanted to see maybe um, some comments about the community. Do you have a writer's community? Do you have a historic um, society, you know, uh, history buffs? Give me something instead of this line. Uh, give me something about your community and how they're, the, you know, how they're a targeted market for a certain genre, a certain type of um, of uh, right uh, author. Okay, so look at this. This is really great. So look at this through all the, so the, since they've opened, they've been use, working with this media. So let's, let's tag this section, format it so it's, you know, even if you had to put a little header in here and just be like um, media partners or partners, and then, you know, this is really, really great. And so that helps get the word out about events, which then ties into people attending events, and then, you know, of course, selling events. So that's important information for the publicity contact. Um, so you do have a line here about their community. Um, I, I saw that you had partners listed down here. So again, I'm kind of hunting and pecking on the information. I think you have good information. You just have to format it a little bit better. I want to know about these partnerships and how that relates to events and book sales. So um, let's let's try to break this out a little bit more. All right, on the left here, they talk about their social media. Again, uh, I, since this is such an inch, this is such a specific conversation. Let's break out social media in its own box and talk about what you're doing with it. You have the capacity of the store. No, you have the size of the store, but I don't know the seating capacity. So let's put that in there. And again, boom, yay, they're reporting. So then we get into events. Excellent. So bold, bold that, bold that you had 20 author events. That's awesome. Okay, and then bold this because this is telling me what type of events work for your store. Okay, so bold that it's Civil War history. Okay, so see how you're you're putting in this you're putting in key information here about your partnership and capacity. I think that should all be in a grid. So so Riverstone is lending toward long form writing here and. Uh, and it's, and it's not formatted enough so I can scan it, okay? So this is an example where formatting is gonna be, they need to emphasize on this, uh, on the next revision. Okay, 
Okay, I'm just reading through here. Okay, location to major hubs of airports, cities, that's important. So the way that they have that is, is good and no map. <laughs> All right, so let's see, let me look at my other notes here. I wanted to know, yeah, I wanted to know the store size venues oh yeah okay so a grid of of your venues and your partner venues a grid on do you have book clubs a, um oh, okay uh, adult what type of genre you have book clubs in okay and so you have story time so i, I again I, I think i'm just frustrated with the, the long paragraphs i was just trying to find the information quickly and I want you to just tell me that you have story time and now you're having a yoga story time. That's cool. That's definitely unique. How does that work? You know, so put it out in a, in a format that's easy to find and then talk about it so you can emphasize that as a unique uh, creative event that you're having at your store in nature workshop. Ah, which also made me think that you have space for workshops, which can go back into about the store space. All right. So you have craft, you have an area to do um, workshops. Coming from a store with a thousand square feet, that was like desirable. So um, let's let's accent that. That is a selling point. All right, and then here's your grid. Great, excellent. And um, again, as the evolution is conversation continues, I would like to see venue type here, the venue where you where you had it, and um, the type of event. So was it free? Was it ticketed? Ticketed with bundle, um, Skype, whatever. Okay, school event. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I only went through the first two pages of your press kit. Before I switch, I'm just going to check to see if there's any questions in here. Don't be shy. Ask questions. I talk fast. Okay, so this is Book Towns, and I wanted to show you. I have not, confession, confession, I have not updated it yet. Um, but I wanted to share some things that I learned about formatting and the layout of it. So as you can see, it's the standard format. I may change it a little bit as based on the information I've been sharing. But when I went to the press kit, when I went to, excuse me, the speed dating event in New York, Caroline's, the venue is, is a low lit um, venue. And so I noticed after like the second year of using, using this format that the the darker background was very hard to read. So I had blue with black font and it was so difficult to read. So I popped it out um, last year and I used um, just white just to make it easier. So going back to, uh, I hope this doesn't confuse anyone, but when I went back to Newtown, I was noticing this dark and it could be challenging just to read it. Maybe not because of the white, but I just wanna point out something that I learned and share with you guys. Don't complicate it with fancy colors in this dark venue, it's just specific to the, um, the room. You wanna make sure that things are easy to read. Also could be because I'm getting older, um, but that's another conversation. So here is our format. Again, um, I have this longer paragraph in here with bold information. I have a contact, exactly who they contact, and um, where we're located, okay? I have the capacities. I point to this box a lot because I'm talking about uh, events and where we could possibly have them. These, these partners are active. So it's not everyone who I have in my backyard, but it's the people who I'm actively talking with all the time about events. I'm going to add to my um, grid, I'm gonna add the type of venue. Header footers, I'm gonna break out my social media, I've talked about that. I just wanna show you our format here. So right now, um, I've been bringing this block into this section a lot because I wanna show them what's new, how or what Booktown is bringing new to the table. So last year it was our book subscription plan, Booktide, okay? And um, so I want to be able to point these out in our conversation. And also when I'm talking to them, I'm circling things that relate so they can remember when they go back to their desk um, and later and they're sorting out their tours that they can look back through their, their notes and remember, oh yeah, that's right. This is something that we can connect with Booktown on. So these are just points that I'm also giving you outside of the how to prepare a press kit is how you use it in your conversations. 
Okay, so I break out our marketing and our what were you what we're using all the time, what we're doing actively all the time. Now, even some of these have to be changed because some of these have not been effective. This, you know, they proved to not be effective. So I'm popping them out and I'm going to try to replace them with something new. Again, school events, big question. Are you using a pre-order form and how do you work with the schools? So in essence, how easy do you make it to, to um, create sales? That's what they want to know. All right. So I'm breaking up my partners. And so again, look, this is on the bottom. <laughs> if I was reviewing this, I would say move this to the top. Okay. So anyway, so it's never perfect. It's always a changing document. It's always evolving. And um, I just want to keep sharing what I'm learning. All right. So moving on. Astoria, they got this to me, I think, last night. So I did a quick review. And uh, I, I reviewed them before in the past, and I was really excited to see their events growing. So again, they have who they are, and who they are, Zora, and where they are, okay? Uh, let's see, they don't have an address up here, so I would probably, I would prefer that to be in the header. And then they have um, information that's bolded in their um, About Us section. And then they have the fast facts. So just visually, let me just show you how long it is. It's two pages. Okay. So visually, I just wanted to say they got a lot of great information in here. But I think now if they can um, create, this is more like a copy and paste outline form um, that got a little busy for me when I was reading it. So I'm thinking just work on the format here. Like you have these boxes. Use some strong headers so I know what this box is. You know, fast facts can be in a box and you can have organize this in a little bit different because you really have good information in here. Because right now, if you would agree, everything is kind of created equal. Even though it's formatted in a bulleted, it's still equal. So I think let's let's do fast facts and let's then bullet. Um, again, you have a thousand square feet. Hey, you're in the club. And you you point out there's 25 people. So yeah, I think we can, I think overall this this document has great information. You've definitely listened to the training. Let's format, let's work on formatting. You know, she has some great local partnerships down here. Again, capacity. I think we can group all this like information together. You know what I'm saying? See over here, she talks about her social media. Um, she talks about a weekly ad in the Queen's Gazette. Let's talk about what you're doing here on social media and break it out and use that language. Like, are you using, are you losing live streams? Or are you posting, uh, are you doing ads and so forth? So they have great fellowship, great, great fellowship. Again, let's talk about how you're doing, how often you're doing your newsletter. Um, I thought this was good too. You know, boom, they do offsites. Call us up if you have an author that's coming in our area. We are ready to go. So that's important. Again, that shows me that they have the system to sell books mobily. All right, nice footer. Again, I, I'd like things up on the top, it's just a style preference. I think it's helpful. Um, and again, overall, since I reviewed this last year, like, Let's just get clear on the front page and the header, like, or the footer. Somewhere put a date. This is this document is for this date. You know, as of. So they have their their sales grid. I like it. It's so much easier to read. You got to admit, it's so much easier to read these grids. And then again, I'm adding the pub the uh, event type. So somewhere in here, they have space. They have a wide margin here. They can put event type again, or they can kind of combine it in here. But all this information, it's helpful. It's chronological. Okay, it's all good, great, great events. And what did they learn? You know, so like what systems developed? Be be ready to talk about it. What systems developed um, with these with the a year of events under your belt? Okay, this is important. It's down here at the bottom. Um, weekly story time. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a plugged in attentive audience. All right. And <laughs> you get great numbers too. So yeah, I would show that up somewhere more prominent. Okay. All right. That was a, 
that was great, Astoria. Great changes, great developments in that. Okay, I think this is my last one. So let me, before I go over to Rebecca's. You have a question. Oh yeah, does the document date have to be in the header footer or is it okay for it just in the document? You know what, I, when I was looking for these, I was looking, actually I was right, I wrote this on yours. I was thinking maybe down here in the, where's my page button? Like as of like a small date, could be just a small, I would put in the footer for yours. Okay, just somewhere. So I know that this is as of, okay, she's got it. All right, let's go. So we have Boogie Down. And for those who don't know, this is a, uh, the books without walls. So she's uh, done, doing pop-ups. So it's a, I was really excited about this model of bookstore and selling books. And um, so again, it's unique, right? So it's important that she puts together a press kit and she shows up for the conversation to talk to publishers. Uh, so we have a header. So there's no address, right? So there's gonna be a contact, boom, there it is. She has a website and she talks about her mission, her about. Who we are, pretty clear to read. The formatting is great, it does help. Again, not necessary. It's, you know, if you're just starting out, don't, don't get overwhelmed. This will all come in time. Okay, so it's really easy to read through this. Boom, right there. She's a member. Where we are. Okay, I probably would start bullet, bulleting some of these points in here. And be careful what we're, why we're, why we're set, saying this information. Um, you know, be cognizant of like, okay, so what are they going to do with the fact that 53,000 people there? Um, but how does that relate, connect to book sales, book readers? Again, I'm, I got this, I think, this morning. So I'm, I'm looking at this quickly. Actually, I'm looking at this for really for the first time with you guys. Um, and Eileen and Kit, please jump in if things pop out. I'm just seeing like I just want bulleted formats in here. I think the bullets are good. Let's let's bold some of the bullets. And then that's important too. How how wide she goes beyond her geographic region. Strong footer. Let's see. No, this is the second page. So one's red. Okay. It's it's hard to see the page difference. And then so boom, now we're going into events. A little bit different style, right? But really good. Let's see. Event attendees sales. Free weekly. Okay. So we'll be down sorry time feature. So I guess my question is because you don't have a, a like a one location, where is this? Um, <clears throat> wow, this is great. So great events here and really good conversation starters. So um, yeah, I think I would add venue or a little bit more detail about that. Ah, oops, this, okay, so that is, that you know, like that's key, like she has permanent pop publications in certain places, and then she has good, so our community. So again, breaking that out, Rebecca, because again, social media is a focus. Let's break that out and talk about what you're doing. Oh, it's weekly, okay, yeah. Uh, so this is more like marketing. Our community is, this is really your marketing section. You have this as your community, but this part is marketing, okay? And that's what they want to know, how you are getting the word out. How committed are you to consistently getting the word out? Um, ah, okay. So I think that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to just ask Eileen and Kit if there was anything on Boogie Down that you saw that I'm not catching. Uh, no, I didn't, but we do have a question from Lori. Okay. All right. So Lori asked in the chat, would it be good to have one info sheet about school events and one about adult in-store events? Well, if you have a large school program and it's worthy and justifies that uh, whole page, 
go for it. Um, again, when you're going to go onto the third page of a press kit, it's got to be definitely justified. If you can fit it in um, and you have a, a detailed program with committed schools each year that denotes, you know, um, that's not really, no, it's, if, there can, if it's a series of things that they look to your bookstore for to fill every year, then maybe you do, do need another page, a half page or whatnot. If you can fit it in some way into a grid that explains it in, in the relationships that you have, keep it on, keep it on the, uh, the, one, you know, the one page, the one, two page. Hope that helps. Some, some stores have a really large school program. Okay, Lori, good. All right, any other questions? I went through a lot. There are some changes, some evolutions, I should say. Um, and based, and those are all based on conversations that I'm having with the, uh, the publisher. So again, I'm, I'm listening to my market. I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm integrating that information back into the press kit. Okay, we got some questions here. All right, Meryl, can you briefly mention how the speed dating runs? Do the publicists sit down and first read our kit? Ah, very good question. And then ask us questions, or do they sit down and have us start pitching our store using the kit as guidance? <laughs> okay, all right, I can answer that one. Um, so Meryl, what you're gonna do is, um, when you, I'm gonna just get down to the part where you're actually sitting down at the table. Eileen has a lot of um, other great things that are going on through the day, but that actual conversation is you sit down at the table, you have your nice and easy, like you kind of establish a little bit of rapport, and then you start having a conversation. You're not letting them read that document in front of you during that meeting. You're using that document simply as a tool to, again, I use it like I highlight, I circle, I point, I have them on their copy, they're making notes, okay, of um, things I'm saying. So they're, they usually, you know, write right on that document. So that's how it goes. I'm actually having a strategic conversation with them. I kind of know my opening. I want to give them just enough information so they can get a sense of me, who I am, what I do, where I am, where I'm working, what store I'm working with, and um, what we're. And I also put in there, this is what I'm looking for. But then I switch it to them because I want to know what their focus is. And I want to see how what they're working on and what's going on in their brain is going to connect with me. So it's a give and take, but it's definitely a strategic conversation. I hope that helps. I have one thing to add to that. Yeah. Um, one thing that I do every, this is Kit, by the way. One thing I do every year when I go in is make sure that I know exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. I will have one thing in particular that I really want this year, and I will make sure that I introduce myself, my store, my location, what I'm really excited about and wanting to work on before I flip it over to them and find out if they can help me with that thing or how they will fit into whatever the programs are that we already run at the store. Yep, perfect, well, well said. Um, okay, so Meryl says thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Astoria, when you said add event type, do you mean children's or adults or something else? I mean, that's helpful to know that it's children's adults um, sometimes they can pick that up from this, the title and the author. So yeah, that is helpful information. But what I was speaking about was, um, was it a free event or was it ticketed with a bundle? Was it a Skype event? Was it a book club? Was it a school event? That's what I mean by type. So I'm not sure what to call that. Maybe that's a format. Style. Style. Um, but that's what I mean. Okay, good. She's got that. I love this chat. <laughs> um, I'm just seeing nothing else. So, Eileen, back to you. Oh no, let me go back to. My <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Let's let's go back. Hold on. I gotta I gotta wrap this up. Oh, geez, Louise, I'm getting butterfingers here. Okay, sorry about that. So we went through these press kits. Okay, and some others. And, uh, okay, so if you're still working on your press kit, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm helpful. 
I'm happy to be helpful in some way quickly right before you're putting it to you know final print. And um, so you can use this information, keep it in your files and reach out to me either by email or text. Let me know that you sent me something by email if you want to send me a text just so um, I can you know look for it in my inbox. All right, happy to do that. Good luck at speed dating, okay? I can't emphasize enough, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. So if you can't get there, hopefully send someone to represent you. All right, that's my last slide. And thank you, Mary Beth, for another great webinar. And we'll be sending out a reminder email with specifics of the day to all of you. I will be asking you for for you to look through the list of publishers who are coming and you get to choose three to five that you want to see. And I will make sure I give you those appointments. And I beg you, do not be a no show that day. If you think you can't come, please find someone on your staff to take your place. And if you can't come, please let me know at least a week in advance so I can schedule someone from our wait list to take that spot. And thank you for joining us. Eileen, how many, so you'll know, they'll know later how many printed copies to bring. Yes, uh, the day get... itself, you can max out, I can max you out at about 25 appointments just based on time. Okay. If so... someone's coming with another staff member and I have a publisher who's open, I'll split teams up. There will be about 35 to 40 publishers there. So I would tell everybody to bring 35 to 40 print because during lunch, That's exactly what I bring. People change staff from morning to afternoon. You know, just bring extra. Good. All right. So 35 to 40. All right. That was great. Thank you so much, Eileen and Kit. Thanks for your help. Welcome. All right. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you on February 28th if you've signed up for speed dating. Bye-bye. I'll end the recording. Bye.